In this season of Oscar nominees, we're asking what happens when movies actually change people's lives? What powerful emotions are they tapping? Well, welcome back to Context, big story screen professor and movie consultant, Babette Buster. You have a thesis that the 10 stages of transformation are critical to who makes the Oscar cut and who doesn't. Yes. What does Hollywood try to tell us about transformation that we may not even realize in a gripping film? Well, it's, uh, there's a huge business of uh, story development in Hollywood. Easily about a billion dollars a year is spent on story development. And every discussion of any story, wherever you get the story, whether it's a true story like Captain Phillips or a made-up story like Gravity or a historical story like 12 Years a Slave, they all have certain things in common, and that is a character feels lost. They're in a free-fall situation where the world falls out from under them. And we all talk in these terms in Hollywood. We say, is this a story of redemption? What is the journey the character is on? When do they discover the courage to become fully alive? When do they make the choice that works through their fear? And what has happened in the history of storytelling in Hollywood is that there is actually sort of a, a map, a diagnostic map of the stages that we all go through when we are fe facing our worst fears. Now, not everybody's fear is the same, but these films portray fears that you and I can relate to. So I'm not going to hopefully be lost in outer space and have to find my way home. I'm not a scientist. I couldn't do that, like in gravity. But I can relate to the fear of having to choose my destiny. Can I do it? Am I up for it? And what we're looking for in a story is when does a character face their worst fear? And all of us don't want to because it's a fear. When do they take the baby step towards breaking through that? Just one step. And there's this sort of almost cataclysmic energy that happens that Goethe talked about. There's boldness and genius and just taking the first step. And when a character does that, they discover courage. Now, courage is a spiritual muscle. It's not bravado. It's not arrogance. It's the courage to live your life and do the thing you would never have done before. And we can all relate to that. There are other factors in the stages of transformation, and the key thing on the opposite side of courage is the discovery of humility. And that is a point when you think, oh, I figured it all out, I know what I'm doing, and then finally you have to let go. And at that point, the most powerful emotion that you will find in cinema is when a character has to apologize, or say, forgive me, or finally trust someone they would never have trusted before. And when they do, there's a cathartic moment that happens in cinema. It can be a comedy, and it can be a tragedy, but something happens in the story which the audience relates to. This is the, what audiences go for, is that experience of seeing on the big screen, visualizing themselves in the story, and saying, I could do that. If that happens to me, I can, I can make that transformation. Bobette, do you think you have an advantage as a professor of story in movie because you do have that great story of God reaching for the human race through transformation? It's part of your background? Um, I wouldn't want to say that I have an advantage. I think that I have uh, been informed from, say, reading the Old Testament and seeing the journey of Moses and, and leading the Israelites for 40 years in the wilderness, the whole saga of the biblical stories is literally a long saga on a path towards redemption. You know, the very word Israel means to struggle. And that is the second act, if you will, of all storytelling is to the struggle. And all storytelling is leading to a redemptive moment or an anti-redemptive moment where the character chooses to do something tragic and they wake up to it and it's too late. And that's a cautionary tale. So I think my background has informed how I view the world and it's also been really gratifying to see when I look at what the Bible is teaching that it's, it's laying out a template for us a diagnostic tool by which we can understand the world in a really, like a map, in which we can chart our course in a more hopeful way. Babette, 
you also feel a Christian like myself can lose the mystery of God because we need everything to be so literal. What's the danger in that? Well, storytelling loses its potency. I mean, science has proven that stories, if you tell them over and over again, your brain sort of just washes through them. There's a boredom, what I call a born, a bored again Christianity. There's uh, no meat to it. I met some students who had grown up in uh, uh, East Berlin, and their family, you know, had been 40 years in with us in the communist era. And th the students said they became so bored with the Lenin sayings everywhere. You can't keep reiterating things with the same images, the same terminology. What we want is an audacity, a whole new approach to understanding the world. We want things turned upside down so that we can come at them fresh and anew so that they can have potency and life in them. That is the biggest challenge, is to present the questions and the mystery, because the truth will speak for itself. The truth will reach out and grab us. But our job is to present the mystery. I'm going to close with one of the mysteries I liked in the movies. Last year, Life of Pi collected four Oscars. This, of course, was based on the novel by Canadian Yann Martel. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I think that's what Ang Lee's intention would be. He spent four years making that film, and he said that for him it was a quest of faith and who is God and what does he ask of us? And I mean, the whole film starts off with the question, this story is you will find God. And I've had, I've shown this film all over the world and I think it's worth noting it made $600 million. And the audience went to see that film and it had no star in it. But what it had was wonder in it. And it was all about a mystery and a question. And in the end, we hear this horrifying second story and we're filled with compassion. And at that point, we experience mercy. And that's where we discover God. And I think I've heard people have just had radical awakenings from seeing that film. And I, I hope, I hope that is the potential that this art form can become is, is a way for people to be awakened to the mystery of life and, and to the truth of life in a whole new way. Babette Buster, thank you very much for giving us our guide to the Oscars and our guide to God in the movies. Thank you. Absolutely. And when we return, the final story beat in this exploration of film, faith, and life. The Bible reveals that God chose many media to speak to humanity. He used his voice, a burning bush, prophets, handwriting on a wall, a witch, a ghost, and a talking donkey. And if they were silent, the rocks and stones would cry out. God speaks in so many languages, so many media, including film. And today, as church attendance wanes and movie theaters fill, Cinema provides a rare opportunity for positive shared experiences. We've learned today that sometimes God does speak through films and sometimes through the conversations that they generate. God is not in every film or book or story, but he yearns to engage you in conversation. Listen and watch for him. Better yet, start the conversation yourself. Just leave plenty of time to listen. For all of us, I'm Lorna Duick. Thanks for watching. You can find all the links and story trailers on our website. Join us again next week as we explore life beyond the headlines. <laughs>